Hello YouTube and welcome to the 18th Weka tutorial. In this tutorial I will start playing with the third application in Weka GUI Chooser. Its name is Knowledge Flow. So far we dealt with Explorer and we also have seen some of the functionalities uh, related with Experimenter. What you have done with Explorer is you can always analyze your data and you can do some sanity checks or sanity tests uh, before uh, uh, indulging yourself into too much deep into applying any particular classifier on a particular data set. And with the experimenter we have seen that we can have the facility to do more than what uh, we have done with Explorer. The knowledge flow is an application provided with Weka GUI and it's it's been uh, fantastic because uh, with knowledge flow you can do almost everything actually you can do everything that you could do with the Explorer application plus with knowledge flow you can have the facility to visualize what you are currently doing and also uh, you can you can save uh, the settings uh, the methods you're currently following to find out the beautiful results you're expecting with your data set and your classifiers so this is this is an enhanced tool you can say uh, from uh, the Explorer that provides you the facility of visualization of what you're actually doing so I believe that uh, you'll understand more when I'm doing something with the knowledge flow application uh, that's why I'm going straight to the knowledge flow tab here. So if you click on knowledge flow, you can have a window just like this, Weka knowledge flow environment. And you can see that we have we are having uh, lots of tabs here. The first one starts with data sources. We have data sinks, filters, classifiers, clusters. So these are the tabs I think you're familiar with because the, these tabs are also present in the Weka Explorer application and we have a pin here at the bottom that shows the status uh, because uh, when you are using knowledge flow and when you are uh, playing with the classifiers on data sets or cross-fold validation testing training and so on at that time this is possible that you're you can experience some errors so those errors if they are uh, present in your experimental setup they can be shown here and you can always take a look at those errors by clicking on the lock tab uh, you can see that I was having some errors as well as I performed some of the experiments previously perfectly so these these things are locked down here so you have the facility to take a look at what your experiment is doing and what your experiment is uh, the faults your experiment is having so to begin with you can um, click on data source and here you can uh, load any file that Weka supports for example R file C45 CSV commerce separated values or database files and so on so these are the files that are supported by Weka to play with so as I have some of our some of my R files that I produced during my experiments I'll start with uh, R floater. So when you are clicking on the R floater at the data source tab, uh, by click when you when you click them, you have a cross here, just like this. So you click on the knowledge flow layout here. So after doing that, uh, this means that uh, this particular uh, option, the icon here, this will load the R file that you are trying to play with. After doing that we are going to evaluation and we will choose the class assigner. So when you're clicking that we'll have a cross here again and you go to the knowledge flow layout and click on that. So what this class assigner does is if you can remember when I was dealing with the Java API of Weka all the time I was saying which of the attributes in my attribute list 
is actually the class attribute that labels uh, the instances in your data set. So that's why I have to choose the class assigner from the evaluation tab and put that into the knowledge flow layout. To connect them, to connect the R floater with the class assigner, you have to right click on R floater and you can uh, click either instance or data set. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'll stick with the data set only because what instance does, I'll come back to it uh, in some later tutorials. So I'll click on data set and you can see that uh, we are having some squares, blue squares around the logo of our floater and class assigner. And also we are having a rubber band a rubber band connector here from uh, generated from our floater. So we are trying to connect our floater with the class assigner. So I take this rubber band uh, connected to class assigner and left click on that. So we are having now a red arrow uh, that says the data set uh, as its label. And which R file we are trying to load. In order to do that, either you can double click on this icon or you can right click on this icon and you can select configure. So from configure, I will choose the R file that I was playing with uh, for many times, uh, 2.R. So I loaded that R file. So what it does is it loads that R file when I will run this program, run this, run this setup, and it will feed that data set to the class assigner. So the, now the task of class assigner is to identify the attribute from my attribute list uh, that actually labels the instances in my data set. So again, I right click on the icon class assigner and I select configure. And from these uh, options, you can see that uh, these are the attributes I was having in my 2.r file. And from those attributes, I know that the nominal attribute called class is my class attribute. So I select that and click on OK. So the next is I have to split my data set and uh, uh, I'm actually doing the cross validation. So in order to do that I have to stay with the evaluation tab and you can see there's an option called cross validation fold maker. So when I'm choosing that I have the crosshair and um, clicking left clicking on the knowledge flow layout and the icon is there now. So what I'm doing is I took the data set, I assigned the class, now I'm assigning, I'm sending that data set to the cross validation fold maker uh, that will automatically create the validation folds, cross validation folds. So in order to do that I have to connect those icons to together, class assigner and cross validation. So in order to do that I have to right click on class assigner and I select data set because I'm sending the data set to cross validation maker. I have the elastic uh, or the rubber band connector uh, in blue and I take my mouse to cross validation fold maker icon and I left click on that. So now I'm, I have sent my data set to cross validation fold maker. Now I have to apply a classification algorithm in order to classify uh, the validation set uh, instances. So in order to do that we can go to the classifiers tab, click on that and for this tutorial I'm going to stick with uh, the naive base classifier. I click that and put that into the layout. And to connect them because I sent the data set to the cross validation fold maker, the cross validation folds have been made and now I have to send the training set to the knife base the same in the same way uh, I connected our floater with class assigner and class assigner with cross validation fold maker just right click on that and this time I'll take the test set as well to knife base because in cross validation you have to consider both training set and test set uh, for getting the results 
by inducing a classifier. So when I'm done with that, now I have to evaluate the classifier. In order to do that, I select the evaluation tab and there you can see, you can see uh, we have a classifier performance evaluator option. I click on that and put that into the layout. Now I'm going to join the knife base icon with the classifier performance evaluator and to do that I right click on the knife base classifier and as this is a batch classifier because I'm actually having the tenfold cross validation with the whole data set so my classifiers will be a batch classifier. I select that and again connect those two the knife base and classifier performance evaluator. So now we, I am having a connector between those two with the label batch classifier. Now I'm going to see or visualize uh, the exactly the way in, in, in the same way I visualized in the Explorer of Weka. So I click on visualization tab and as you can remember that Weka always uh, produced text type of results in its output pane in the classifier tab so we have an option called text viewer I click on that and put that into the layout and I have to bring the results from the classifier performance evaluator to text viewer so I right click on that and as those are texts so I select on text and I select text and connect that to the text viewer so now I am finished I'm almost done the to run in order to run this setup so this is your knowledge flow layout okay so this is the visualization of exactly what you did with with the Explorer uh, application of Weka but this time you can see it because we are dealing with dealing this in knowledge flow layout so to run this setup I have to right click on the R floater and there is an action called start loading so I click on that and you can see that the log has been changed a lot and if you go to the status then you can see that everything has been performed very well or without an, any error if there is an error then you can have some highlighted red items here if there is an or if there is any warning then you can have those warnings in yellow labels yellow colored labels so at that time if you're having an error or warning then you can go back to the log section you can see what's really happening there what's what's really gone wrong so we are not having any error for this case and we have also uh, loaded the R file here everything has been done for you and the result is waiting for you uh, at this text viewer icon so we can right click on this icon and we have the option called show results if I click on show results then you can see that this is the exactly this result is similar to what we have seen in the Explorer we have the precision recall F score as well as true, true positive and false positive rates ROC curve and also we have the confusion matrix as well as we have some information on misclassification and correct correctly classified uh, instances of your data set so in this case uh, you have the options to save this setup this is kind of uh, a picture like uh, right uh, and you can always insert this picture in your methods section if you're writing a research paper or if you're writing a report for your homework so in order to do that if you want to save this uh, as a BMP or JPEG image you have to click on control you have to select control alter shift and left click then you have the option to save this image as BMP JPEG PNG or postscript EPS files so again for your convenience I'm going to uh, write down here uh, what I did to save this uh, method or save this setup actually I click on call to control control sorry control alter and shift and then 
with these keys pressed I clicked left mouse button and then I have the option to save the image as BMP or JPEG okay so now I'm saving that as 1.BMP and I click on save and on my desktop I have the BMP file I can see that this is the setup I made uh, for my experiment and it's been saved as BMP file so you can always reuse this BMP file in your report or in the research paper you are trying to write and there is also a functionality to uh, save your result as well uh, in order to save that result we were having with our classifier night based classifier we go to the text viewer and we take the action show results so these are this is the result we were having with my with our classifier so again to save this we press control alter shift and left click and we can save this as 2.bmp so you can go back to your desktop and I sort them by type so that thing comes up so we have the 2.bmp and so you can see this is the result we had with our night base classifier on 2.r file so that's pretty much of it that's the that's a very good way to start working with knowledge flow environment i'll be back with more videos uh, with other options uh, that you can use when you're dealing with knowledge flow environment and i think you'll like this environment more than you like the explorer environment